Hi you guys and welcome back to A Cup of Joe with your girl Joe. I am here today with a story time, a probably well overdue story time. Um, so today's story time will be how I met and got into the situation I got into with the shady pastor. Now if you've been following me, you know I did a whole series on what it was like to deal with the shady pastor because the shady pastor y'all was shady, okay? He was trying to get up in them draws and I didn't have time. So sit down, grab your popcorn, get you some juice, get you some tea, grab your little wine or whatever the case may be, and let's get into the story time. So this time, February, March, yeah, about February of last year, the guy that I was talking to at the time, um, I was letting him know that I was really, I was tired of running my home daycare out of my apartment, which I had been doing for like three or four years at that time. I let him know that I was tired of doing it out of my apartment and I was interested in buying a house but because I live in the Bay Area and I, my gross wasn't quite where it needed to be, my credit wasn't quite where it needed to be, um, I really wanted to look at my other options. So at the time what I did is I let um, the person that I, was, that I thought I was dating at the time know that I was looking for a partner. So I found one partner through my kid's friend and then another partner through somebody um, I did makeup with. The one partner who was my kid's friend's mother came second. So the very first partner that I took on was the lady, the, the person from that I knew through makeup and that didn't go well. Uh, we didn't have the same vision for the daycare. I felt like they were more all about money, 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 money and I really wanted to bring a different type of daycare, uh, child care to the system, a very holistic, outdoorsy, um, especially new to um, preschool, right? So there are some outdoors schools, um, but uh, not a whole lot. So that was my vision for the school. The other person their vision was more about money which is no shade because you know we got to get paid this is a business but we just had two different directions when we got ready to split i still wanted to take on another partner so i went through my kids friend's mother Th this person was already a preschool teacher had just went to school uh, i think just got their teacher's permit or something like that and was now getting experience they were excited about the idea great I thought that was gonna work it didn't work because we didn't have the same work ethic I would email her and text her and try to get you know questions of places and names and you know all the stuff that comes with building a business and I could never get a response out of her unless it was something for like the kids or something which is no you know but when it comes to my coin we gotta be able to communicate so then that's how I ended up with the shady pastor. So the dude that I was dating with at the time um, told me about this pastor who was his pastor for since he was a little kid. So I'm not religious, just disclaimer, I'm not religious at all. I was brought up in a Baptist Christian church, but I do not associate myself with any religion, but I'm very, 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 very spiritual. And so that was one of my concerns so the person that I was dating at the time had me meet with the pastor. I met with the pastor, I created this whole little, um, it actually wasn't little, it was like a 15-20 page proposal um, what the daycare, what my purpose was, how many people, how many staff, how many kids, um, what it would look like and things like that. Uh, all the operating cost and um, rules and regulations that we would need to follow so that way he could tell me if that was something that he was interested in. Well he didn't even look at the proposal which should have been my first clue. Um, he didn't look at the proposal he said it was good. I told him that I would give him like a week to look at the proposal and then we would meet again. I gave him a week um, and then after the week he still didn't look at the proposal so I gave him like another couple of days he kind of skimmed the proposal he said yes while he was showing me the property he actually showed me the pl a place that was on the property that was like a little apartment that he was using for storage supposedly he was supposed to use it as a non-profit for homeless people or people who was who were 
in transitional housing for addictions but at the time he was just renting it out to one person for like five hundred dollars this person wasn't um an addict and they weren't necessarily homeless they were just somebody that they knew that he could get some money off of so he kicked them out and had me come in and when I moved in there was nothing moved he didn't move anything he didn't take out anything so me and my kids spent um like a week maybe a few days maybe like two or three days moving the stuff that the pastor was supposed to move out that he said he was going to move out and that should have been sign number two so as i move everything out with bookshelves beds uh tv stuff like that and clean down the carpet clean the blinds wipe it was really really dusty because he had a lot of bookshelves there and a lot of office supplies um and dishes like stuff and dishes from the person who was there before that he got rid of but they didn't clean up so we had to do a lot of cleaning when we went in when like the second month no the first month came first or second month because i think maybe the first month was already paid but like by the second month by the second month i had deducted all of the things that he was supposed to fix before i moved in there well when i deducted the the items off of the rent and gave him the rest of the rent that's when he wanted to talk to me about all the stuff that I had told him that I needed to be fixed before. So it wasn't just like I moved in and started fixing stuff. I gave him a list of everything that needed to be fixed in the house when we first went through the walkthrough. He didn't fix anything. He didn't move anything. So he let alone didn't fix anything. So um, I told him, you know, I had let you know this months before I even moved in. It was outlet. It was the stuff like an outlet, like the whole outside of the outlet were missing. There was multiple windows that were broken. There was no bathroom, like a uh, shower that so you couldn't turn the knob. It would just break off. And the sink in the kitchen it leaked water, right? And so we all know that if you have a sink that leaks, if you have anything that leaks water, you're gonna have mold. So I was trying to prevent all of that. And like I said, we did have discussed this before I even moved in, but lo and behold, here I am. So I have somebody fix these things. Some of the stuff I can fix, but not really. So I have somebody fix the things and I deduct them off the item. First thing he tells me is this is the first time he tells me, don't start none, there won't be none. So look, I've never, ever, 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 ever seen that in the Bible. Never. Okay? So if one of you guys could just tell me where in the Bible, okay, the book of Quran, whatever, whatever, the book of Allah, where it says don't start no will be the... I will gladly go back to church. So... After he told me that the first time, I read it to him three times that by California state law, he was supposed to fix these things. And because he didn't fix these things, I have all right to deduct them for the rent and turn in the rest of the rent. So he told me that he was going to have his wife relook look over the numbers. And like I said, I told him three times I wasn't paying anything else and nothing more because I had to fix these things that he was supposed to fix. Time goes on. We get over that. Maybe like a month later, um, he has people because this is not a real church. As you can see from my series, it's not a real church. It's like a storage place and a business for him to kind of keep as a tax cover up. And so he would have people from his business come and park into my parking stall. By our contract, I have two parking stalls. He would have people come park into our parking stall. Well, on this day specifically, I had two infant babies that were in carriers that were asleep. And like a few school age kids because it was a minimum day. I go and put the babies inside and take the kids inside and park in his wife's parking spot. Okay. But that's because they have somebody parked in my parking spot. And I just told you I had not one but two babies that I had the carrier in carriers and they were asleep. So I took them inside. Before I could even turn around good, here comes the pastor's wife bamming on my door. Bammy, bammy, bammy. So I go running to the door because like I just said, I had two babies asleep and I wasn't trying to have them wake. She just starts yelling at me, calling me ratchet, better telling me I better move about her space. Woo woo, like really getting at me like a hood bitch. Like really getting at me like a hood bitch, okay? And so at first I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna move the car, you know, and try to explain to her. She's like, I don't care why you parked there. You better move your car right now. So I tell her that to tell her company to move out of my spot so I can move. 
she said she ain't gonna tell nobody nothing and I better move my out of my spot. So I slammed the door in her face. You got me fucked up. Like what? What's what? You not finna come to my door acting hella ghetto and hella ratchet telling me what I should and should not do after you are in the wrong. You are in the wrong. So she's hella loud after I close the door. She's hella loud. She's screaming for her husband. Her husband is a sucker. He's a punk. So he don't come. Now the whole neighborhood could hear this. But of course he's a sucker so he don't come. And then the grandson, the older grandson comes out and she's like, where's your granddad? And he's like, in the office where he's always at. And you can hear her say, well, she told me to come tell you to tell her to move. And uh, you better tell her to get out of my spot. So I wait like five, ten minutes because I'm being petty. I'm being extra petty. And I finally get my car keys and I go to move my car out of her spot. Now, as I am getting ready to move my car out of her spot, she literally comes to my like window area and my windows roll down she comes to my area and tells me yeah you better move your car duh, 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 duh. you better never move put your uh car in my spot you hella ghetto you hella ratchet Ooh. Uh, bitch. Uh, bitch. now at this time she comes out the person who's parked in my spot comes out too because she's causing a big ass scene like big ass scene like big ass scene um and he you know, is there with the exchange. And so I tell her, oh, I'm not moving anything. I take my key out of the ignition and tell her she can't make me move. I won't move. And take my key out of the kitchen. Take, I take my key out of the ignition. I lock the door and I go back to my house. The fuck? Fuck I look like. Respect goes two ways. I don't give a fuck who you are. No, I don't care. I'm not here for it. You're not finna talk to me any other way. I'm not finna talk to you any other way. And we gonna be alright. But as soon as you pop off, whatever energy, I'm gonna meet you there. Okay? So she gets really mad. Like, really mad? She's hella mad. So she goes back in there and she's, ah, my parking spot, da 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 da. She drives off, she takes off. The fuck? I watch the whole thing from my window and see the shady pastor so y'all can see him with his eyes so if you ever in Oakland off 55th and you see this church with the shady ass pastor you stay away from him because it's not a real church he's not a good tax person he's not a good person his wife got bad energy they got bad juju they done put bad juju all over that church I don't know but hopefully there will be a story time later on in life where I tell you guys I actually end up getting getting this property because that property is still on my heart and still in my soul. I still want the property. I still think that I could have a, a great daycare there and a great after school program. Maybe even some homeschooling. I could um, do yoga classes like I wanted to for the community and have bingo night and have movie night for the community so i definitely still have my eye on the property as far as purchasing it so that's another reason why i'm like working on my credit and trying to stack my money and stuff because i really really want that property um and he's not doing nothing with it he's not running a church out of it he's not renting it out he's not letting other people use it unless you can see in some of my other videos literally all he's doing is renting out places so people can park their cars so he can get his stuff okay so on top of being a shady pastor and running a business there he literally just lets people park their cars there so they can pay him money so he literally is getting money off of everything but not paying his taxes boo boo um and it's really shitty because all of this could have been avoided if I would have put stuff in contract ahead of time, had him sign it ahead of time, uh, had a lawyer present ahead of time, and I definitely learned my lesson. One, don't trust people just because they're of status, okay? Doesn't mean that they're morally correct. Two, do not bend your morals for somebody or something that you want. No, the, the shady pastor could not get these draws. He could not get these draws just because you wanted me to, because I really wanted to create my dream business there create my dream child care no i was not no i was not here for it you're not gonna have me no out here being no home wrecker um also watch who you connect with as far as relationships because birds of a feather flock together remember i told you i met the shady pastor through a guy that i was dating well the guy that i was dating actually had a whole wife <laughs> 
how you like that for your ass, okay? So, yeah, it was just a crazy time of my life. I'm so glad that this is over. I'm so glad I'm away from the Shady Pastor and getting ready to start a new, a new cycle with a new boo, a new bay, a new space. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that story time of the Shady Pastor, and I will see you in the next video. I hope that you like the Black Panther vibes that I'm getting. I'm definitely feeling myself today. And thank you for listening to my story time. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.